Hello and welcome, everyone, to Good Old Rocky Talk, a Vol Society podcast. I'm your host, Brad, here with my partners, the Davids. We're glad you're listening wherever you are. This is Good Old Rocky Talk. Welcome back, everyone, to episode six of Good Old Rocky Talk. I'm your host, Brad Frank, along with my partners, as usual, David Dees and David Morrison. Guys, how are we doing tonight? Good evening, Hey, what's up, Brad? Guys, I'll tell you what, I'm doing pretty great. Doing pretty great right now. As many of you know, uh, if you follow us on Vol Society uh, on social media, the three of us were actually at the game uh, this Saturday, this past Saturday night, and what a day it was. The Vols took care of business, beating South Carolina 41-20 to in front of an electric crowd. And I also tailgated all day starting at 9 a.m. for a 7.30 p.m. game. And when I tell you it was a tailgate, let me just say this. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was amazing. And I want to give a quick shout out real quick to my good friends for hosting this. Brian and Brittany, if you're listening, an incredible event. Uh, Thank you once again. Always great to see you guys. Now, tonight on our show, we have a very special guest joining us for a nice conversation. This person has been blowing up the internet. After the Tennessee versus UTSA game, because of his electric energy and his voice, he's the first person to ever do a radio broadcast for the Tennessee football team in Spanish, and he's here with us tonight. Without further ado, please welcome the good old Rocky Talk, the Spanish voice of the Vols. Mr. Carlos Lopez. <laughs> Carlos. What's going on, guys? Hey, man. Thanks you for being know, with us, buddy. Man, God is good. You know, if anybody's been following me, then, you know, God gets the credit for all of this. And what an amazing opportunity two weeks ago. Not only did we make history as a university for the first ever Spanish broadcast, but we all as a university, as a community, as a state made history. If you wear, I've said it already and I'll say it for the rest of my life. If you wear that power T on your chest with pride and you say that you love the University of Tennessee, this was for you as well. Woo! Let me tell you right now, Carlos. <laughs> I, let me tell you right now. First of all, I've got goosebumps. You need to be doing public speaking appearances as well, because I'm going to tell you right now, I'm ready to get on that field and wear a power tee and start hitting somebody. <laughs> well, I just you know, met this guy. Um, we just met this guy. Yeah. And let me tell you, the energy, the passion is there. I mean, it's just ingrained in you. Unbelievable. Well, listen, you did an amazing job uh, broadcasting that game. And like I said, you're the talk of the town, buddy. Um, just your energy alone, just unbelievable. Now, listen, I want to, I want to ask you a question. Let me get started here. I want you to tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, where you're from and how you even got interested in the Vols. Yeah, I got you, man. So, uh, I've done a little, you know, quite a few interviews now since prior to all of this kind of blowing up. Uh, last October when we beat Alabama, I started just posting videos on social media because the World Cup was about, you know, last October we beat Bama. And then yep. in November, the World Cup was about to start happening. So I think a lot of people are familiar with Spanish announcers during soccer games. Oh, yeah. So I was watching I was watching our game and I was like, man, this ESPN announcers, man, they are killing me. Anytime... <laughs> And, you know, I, you know, I'm sorry to say it, but I was like, I was, I'm listening to this ESPN announcers. Anytime we did something good, it, there was nothing there. No. And I'm like, you know what? Let, let me try something because the World Cup is about to start happening. So I was like, let me just record something. And I was pressing fan, got the ball at the two yard line, and then we scored. 
And then, you know, aquí viene Tennessee, señores y señores, la ofensiva más rápida del mundo. Vamos a ver si la van a correr o la van a pasar. Aquí viene Tennessee, señores y la corre para poner el campo. 3, 2, 1, dale 6. And then all that <laughs> stuff yeah. started coming out. I posted that 30 second clip on Twitter. And then the next day, um, it was history. So the, the, that's how I kind of got started with okay. it. You know, being on that soccer background, my family and I migrated from the country of Venezuela. Okay. So we are from Venezuela, and my mother was working for the national police in the 90s. And if people are if people are familiar with their, you know, their history and whatnot in other countries, in the 90s is when Hugo Chavez started running his campaign for presidency of Venezuela. I was eight, nine years old. My mother was working for the national police as an accountant. And in 1999 is when Hugo Chavez started making his campaign. And he said, for all the government workers for the next seven months, 60% of your check is going to go to my campaign. And my mother was like, well, what's going on around here? What do you mean 60% of my check is going to you? Is this like a volunteer type of thing or is it a for real? So, you know, and, and I started learning all this. As we start getting older and our mother starts telling us a story and she starts showing us documents and all this type of stuff. So I think like a week later, they started passing that paper around for whoever was going to sign that the 60% was going to go to her. So she was like, okay, cool. So this is volunteer. So she signed no, that her her money, you know, she's got two kids. I have an older brother. Uh, she's got two kids. She, she signed no. The next day she was getting called that she was fired. And then she was like, what? Wait a minute. What do you mean in my fire? And then she started getting, you know, some letters at the house, uh, being really politically harassed yeah. by her own people. And then she was like, you know, I got to get out of here. So in 1999, um, I do remember this because I've already said it before. Uh, we started we lived in a little, you know, two bedroom apartment in Venezuela. And all of a sudden we had no fridge. All of a sudden we had no microwave. My mother started selling everything inside the house. That way she can get some dollars uh, to come mm -hmm. to the United States. She had a friend that had a kind of like a business in Miami. So she came, my mother came with that friend to Miami in 1999 without my brother and me. We stayed with our paternal grandmother. And then if, I don't know if you're familiar with stuff like, let's say, for example, you three go to another country. Nobody in that country does podcasts. So a company wants to start a podcast and you're the only three that can do it. So that country is going to help you get your papers because you do podcasts. So my mother was so good with numbers that whatever she was, the programs that she knew how to do, that company needed. So that company kind of helped my mom um, started getting what's called a green card. So, yeah. you know, she applied for a green card. She got it. 2001 comes so from 1999 to 2001 my mother's here in america you know is trying to just now that i'm 33 years old i'm looking back and i'm like yeah you, you know you were extremely unselfish you did this for us 2001 comes she comes back to venezuela and says hey do you guys want to go to america with me or do you want to stay in venezuela and we're like what what do you mean you we we want to get out of here too Yeah. So, you know, uh, uh, 2001 comes and we arrived here. We lived in Miami for a little bit. And mom was like, we're not going to learn English down here. So, you know, at that time, she got married to my stepfather. He was a pipe fitter. And then he got a job offer in Connecticut. Uh, my stepfather's Cuban. Uh, and then we moved to Hartford, Connecticut. Hartford, Connecticut is the same way. Uh, a bunch of Puerto Ricans, a bunch of Dominicans. And mom was like, man, uh, We ain't going to learn English up here. In 2001, we don't know anything about American sports because if you know Venezuela, Venezuela, it's all baseball for us. Right. Venezuela right. is baseball and yep. outdoor soccer. And yep. that's it. And then mom just starts watching the TV in 2001. And then she starts seeing this woman named Pat Summit. And in <laughs> 2000, you know, 2000, 2001, mom starts telling us about this rivalry between, you know, at this time we're in Hartford, Connecticut. And yeah. this time, mom's like, you guys got to watch this rival between Yukon and Las Chicas Vols. She calls him Las Chicas Vols, which is Lady Vols in Spanish. Yeah. And wow. we're like, you know, basketball, all we've known is baseball. But mom, ever since 2001, and we're living in Connecticut, she's always loved Pat Summit. 
So ever since we're up there, we've only seen the power T. I see the power T since 2001. And she's like, we got, we got to get to Tennessee. But we, she didn't know from Hartford, she didn't know where Tennessee was. She didn't know when we arrived to, you know, we live in Sevier County. We're in Sevier County, you know, Pitching Forge, Gatlinburg, Seymour. We're in that county. And she's got a friend. We moved down here. <laughs> we're just driving around. And the only thing, if you were to talk to my mom, the only thing she would tell you is gold ball. You know, but with my mom's with my mom's accent, it's with my mom's accent. It's hilarious because, you know, she you think she's talking about balls. You know, she's like gold balls, gold balls. And it's you know, it's the sun sphere. So we're driving around downtown and she sees the sun sphere. And then we see Neyland Stadium and she's like, no way we're no way we're here. And then we see Neyland Stadium. And from that time, our love starts growing for the University of Tennessee. At this time, we didn't really know about football. We didn't know about any of that stuff because my brother and I just played soccer and baseball. Mm-hmm. We go through Seymour. I graduate through Seymour High School. Uh, I played. Uh, I decided to join the football team after playing soccer. The head coach there, his name is Gary Householder, calls me out to the football team. I start kicking, and it was and it was just easy. It, it was easy to kick a football, and I was like, all I got to do is just take three steps back, two to the side, and kick a ball through the upright. Sure. And then, fantastic. I started doing well. Um, I didn't know anything about recruiting. I didn't know anything about that. You know, this was 2005, you know, to, from 2001 to really 2013, there was not a lot, not a lot of Hispanics in this area. Um, so my brother and I, we're really the only ones start kicking, get us, get a scholarship offer at Carson Newman college at that time. Now it's Carson Newman university, uh, kicked under Ken Sparks because no of the Spanish. Yeah. I kicked under Ken Sparks, you know, no um, kidding. I yeah. August know the 4th. Yeah, August the 4th in 2000, uh, 2008, I arrived to Carson Newman, and uh, that's when I gave my life to Christ at Carson Newman College. And yeah. then because of the whole Spanish deal, they were like, hey, you know, you can take a placement exam. And I was like, cool. So I take a placement exam. It gives me 16 credit hours. So I have uh, – I basically graduated in three years from Carson Newman, yeah. and then – I kick there, all conference. You know, we go to the Division II national, semi, uh, national semifinals. We play against Grand Valley State. Uh, yeah. We get our butts kicked, no problem. Season's over. And then I guess I graduate, and then I have a couple of universities hit me up. I think, it, I think at that time it was Wake Forest and Middle Tennessee. And it was when I started learning about the transfer portal. But it's not like the transfer portal now in sure. 2000 and, you know, in 2011, I graduate Carson Newman. Then I do a graduate transfer to Middle Tennessee State and I kick under Rick Stockstill. Um, <laughs> had an unbelievable year, had an unbelievable year, you know, do the NFL, uh, uh, do the NFL kicking combine in L.A., yeah. do pro day at Middle Tennessee State, get a couple of calls from some NFL teams. Uh, and then I go down to Tampa Bay because Derek Brooks is the general manager for the Arena Football League team, the Tampa Bay Storm. So I kick for a season in the Arena Football League, and then the Arena League kind of folds. I come back to Tennessee, and then the winningest coach in the state of Tennessee, Gary Rankin, who is now a boy Buchanan, yeah. uh, shows up at my place of work because now I have – Two master's degree. I have one. I have a bachelor's degree from Carson Newman, and then I have a master's degree from Middle Tennessee State. And then I get a job uh, at a boys and girls club as an education director. Then at that time, this is this is a real cool story right here. At that time, because of the language and all that type of stuff, uh, I applied to be an FBI agent. You know, because of the language and the education. And yeah. then I see at the boys and girls club just two big dudes coming through. And I'm like, this is the FBI. <laughs> no, it was Gary Rankin and his son. And they were, they were huge. Just wow. massive. And they're like, wow. hey, I'm, I'm Gary Rankin. I'm like, I know, I know who you are. It's like, hey, <laughs> you know, do you want to come and help me uh, with my kicking team? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, absolutely. And he's like, you can just start one day a week. You know, I just, I just show up to Alcoa on Tuesdays. At that time, I'm still working at the Boys and Girls Club and whatnot. And then through those seasons, you know, I think people are aware of Alcoa High School now. Um, oh, yes. Rest is history. We've won the, the past oh, eight yes. state championships in a row. Now his son 
mm-hmm. was in the seventh grade at that time. Now he's the kicker at Middle Tennessee State, doing amazing things. And then, you know, all of a sudden, as I'm coaching in the sideline, I'm just doing play by play in Spanish, blah, blah, blah on the side, just in my head, never really telling anybody. And then, you know, years later, again, we play Alabama. And then I put it all together and I said, you know, I've, I've been always, my wife gets on me all the time. She's like, why are you always trying to get somewhere else? Are you not all, are you not ever content? Are you not ever satisfied? And I'm like, my love, I'm satisfied with, with you. I'm satisfied with my family. I'm satisfied with, with, with everything that we have together. But I just feel something inside of me that I'm meant for something bigger. I've always been searching for something that only I could fulfill. Yeah. I post that video and then I'm like, this is it. There's nobody in Tennessee doing what I'm doing. Nobody's doing Spanish broadcasting. I start posting videos. Um, one of the coolest things about this whole situation is, is that, you know, when, when people talk about a leap of faith, brothers, let me tell you about a little leap of faith. Hmm. I'm doing all these videos, blah, blah, blah. Everybody's loving it. I get a call uh, from UT. I sent an email. The Vault Network hits me up and they said, hey, we love everything that you're doing. But you're a high school teacher. You know, and this whole time after the Arena League folded, I go to Alcoa. Alcoa says, I'm just coaching. And Alcoa says, hey, you speak Spanish. Why not go back to school and get your teaching degree? Perfect. So since 2015, I've been teaching high school Spanish. There is an NCAA, and now I know it by memory, 11.4.1 NCAA violation that a high school coach cannot work for a university because, and I'm coaching at Alcoa. It's a recruiting violation, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, listen, at this time, nobody's offered me anything. Nobody said, hey, this is going to happen. Nobody said it. So I was like, you know what? I need to resign. If this is something that, that I want to happen, I don't want the university to get in trouble at, 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 for anything. So I sure. take a leap of faith. Uh, at this time, you know, I, I'm talking with WVLT, uh, WBIR, WATE. WATE gives me an opportunity that I'm still doing right now as a digital anchor with Bo Williams. And we do a Friday frenzy halftime show for high school football, you know, whatever they need me to record, you know, to bring this energy that everybody's talking about. I do. Nice. Um, so I get to do that. And then, you know, I get an email from the Vault Network and they said, hey, whenever we had our meeting and now you now I've had meetings after sending hundreds of emails, hundreds of DMs on Instagram, hundreds of messages on Facebook just to try to connect with someone. Right. One one person gets back to me and it's our head women's tennis coach, Allison Ojeda. Alison Ojeda just happens to be Mexican, and she is mm. our SEC Coach of the Year, leading our women's tennis team to NCAA tournaments year mm-hmm. in and year out. She mm-hmm. just got a contract extension. She is mm-hmm. a boss. Mm-hmm. She is a boss. Sends me a DM back. She says, Carlos, I love everything that you're doing. Can you please come? I have three players that uh, that are Spanish speaking, I want you to do something to just interview them because I want if we're going to put this out and I was probably going, you know, I know I'm talking a lot, but this is extremely important. Yeah, we have international players that come to represent our university, but they're not just representing our university. They're representing their countries as well. Yeah. Those families they don't have that access to be able to see what their daughters and what their sons are doing. Uh, You know, we have our women's tennis team. We have our men's team. We have a basketball player on the basketball team, Santiago, who's from Uruguay, who is interviewing these players in Spanish and sending them back to their countries that where their families can see it. I said, wait a minute, we got to do something about this. So growing up, I watched this show on the Discovery Channel called Dirty Jobs with Mike Rowe. Okay? Yeah. So now I grabbed that idea, and this is something extremely cool that now I get to do um, with the university. 
I grabbed that idea and turned it into athletics. And my show is actually about to come out this week. It's called Vamos Vols with Carlos Lopez. I get to go inside UT Athletics and I get to participate in all of these sports that the Spanish speaking student athletes participate in. And I practice with them and I'm interviewing them at the same time. Now they get to grab that YouTube link, send it home, and those families are able to watch this. Beautiful. Alison wow. Ojeda connects me with some people, and then all of a sudden, boom, I'm getting an email from an unbelievable leader, Dr. Monica LeBron, Deputy AD of Championship Resources, mm. boss lady. Mm. She brings in Miss Alicia Lungsworth, NCAA compliance boss lady. Wow. And they said, hey, we are going to connect you with the Vault Network. Then all of a sudden, Vault Network says, hey, the way that you have represented yourself without actually being a member of us, that's what we look for. The way that you had that meeting, the way that you spoke, the way that you were so respectful, September 23rd is your day. Bo, I start crying. Uh, man, I'm about to get emotional right now. Um, mm. When you get that, when you get that email, say, "Hey, you're about to make history right here for the University of Tennessee as a as the first Latino man to do a Spanish broadcast for the university that you graduated from." From I told them, "Listen." You give me this opportunity, and I promise you, I will not let you down. Mm. And I'm, I'll forever be grateful they gave me that opportunity. And not only was I the play-by-play -play guy, but my analyst, VFL, mm. longest field goal in the SEC, 60 yards against Georgia Tech, mm -hmm. Mr. Fuad Rivas. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. <laughs> Then you hop wow. in in there and you got Brian Rice in the controls from the Vol Network. Mm -hmm. Everything runs smooth. 80-yard, 80 81-yard touchdown play. Fouad's elbowing me. I'm going crazy. Fouad's elbowing me. Carlos, look. The whole press box is looking to the left. Everybody's phones up. Everybody's videoing. We're on the we're on the national radio booth. Small, wow. you know. Josh, my buddy to my left, as a spotter. I'm in the middle. Fuas to the right. Brian's behind us. Fuas elbowing me. Carlos, Carlos. The whole press box. Everybody's got their phones up. Like, what is going? Just videoing, and I'm like, this was meant to be. This was meant to be that the first play of a historic moment, not only in Tennessee, the University of Tennessee, but in the whole state and in the whole nation. It had to be this touchdown play and it had to be this call. And now everybody wants Dale Seis. Now everybody wants Seis Mas. Now everybody wants Vamos Vols. Then all of a sudden, I see people coming into the booth. It's the SEC network. They're all the way to the very right side of the press box. And they say, we have to connect to this because, and it's the word that's been going around. We have to connect to this because this is too electric. And then fourth quarter comes around and our phones just start <laughs> blowing up. <laughs> yeah, We have a two and a half minute spot in the SEC network, mm. the whole university. The whole state of Tennessee has just made history for the first ever Spanish broadcast. And all I could think was, are we really here? This is unbelievable. And now when I'm right here talking with you guys about it and getting emotional and I'm and I'm looking at y'all and I'm talking about it. And it's like I'm back there from the booth looking down mm. and it like it's like I'm still there. What, wanting more, wanting more. Carlos, this is David Dees. Um, mm. what, what a story, man. And now here in the back story behind the call, right, it gives a new perspective. Um, you know, thinking about you coming on, 
I, I think we probably have all discussed it and shared the same sentiment as probably what you're hearing. It's one of the most electric calls I've ever heard uh, from a Tennessee game. It's a throwback to the to the John Moore days of Tennessee football, and to be able to hear that in Spanish. I don't speak Spanish fluently. I know a very little. And uh, you can just pick up on the passion. You can pick up on the excitement. And so that that's just something that multiple people have told us. I don't know what he's saying. I don't really care what he's saying. I feel the passion behind it. I hear the passion behind it. And so uh, I, I think that that's something that is really resonating with Tennessee fans. Um, as you look ahead to where your career is going in broadcasting, I know this is just a little taste and you said you wanted more. What do you envision? You're a dreamer, obviously, uh, here in your backstory coming from Venezuela. What is your um, – what is your end game? What is your goal? Where do you, how, how, what is the ceiling? How far do you see this thing going? And as it relates specifically to your Spanish broadcast with, with Tennessee. Right. So after the game, you know, you always have your stats and, you know, your, your feedback and whatnot. And the reaction that the Spanish broadcast received after the game and still till today, you know, because again, South Carolina, it was just voiceovers, the national booth, the national radio booth was taken. So again, I'm still, I'm still working. I'm still watching the game and I'm still calling it that way. When they call, I've received emails afterwards, you know, from ADs, from the vault network. We want this on a every, on a every game base. Tennessee would become the third university nationwide to have Spanish broadcast. The only ones that have it right now for their home games are Texas A&M and UCF. So now Tennessee has just become the third one to have, you know, the biggest, the biggest university out of all the ones that have, you know, we just became the third one to have a Spanish broadcast. My dream is to make this permanent. Uh, They already know that I will represent them in the most professional fashion possible way you can think of. But I wouldn't mind expanding this a little bit and saying, hey, you know what? Maybe we need to have an SEC network in Espanol and maybe have one one game, you know, an SEC game of the week that we broadcast in Spanish as well and mm. take me to that game. You know, I got my team. Let, let, let me take my team, set up wherever we need to set up, and let's have an SEC game of the week broadcast in Spanish because, and, and this is probably terrible of me to say, but, nobody's going to bring what I'm going to bring to that broadcast yeah. booth. To that broadcast booth, nobody's yeah. going to bring what my team is going to be able to bring. So, uh, again, I, I have to keep saying this because, you know, God gets the credit. God has given me this ability to uh, be able to speak. And, you know, Brad mentioned it before. I've had, you know, now I have a, I think I have about a 10 to 11 uh, speaking engagements coming up where I'm the uh, special guest speaker. I think I have one coming up with uh, Boy Scouts of America and uh, Alzheimer's Tennessee and several high schools in the area to to really just make that impact because at the end of the day, really this whole thing started because if you look if you look in the profession aspect and you look at Hispanics, what are, what are our norm jobs that we're supposed to have when, you know, somebody migrates over here? We're supposed to be construction workers. We're supposed to be landscapers. We're supposed to be roofers. We're supposed to be painters. No problem. I'm all about it. I did it. I did hardscaping. You know, uh, when I was in between, I'll go play pro football and this, this and that. I'm a hardscaper. I was laying pavers. I was yeah. painting. I was doing a refurbishing for clean homes, you know, fixing repos up. Cool. No problem. But I want to show Spanish speaking, English speaking, Chinese speaking. I don't care where those kids come from. I want to show the youth. I want to show people that are grown because, you know, we're grown right now. I started this at 32 years old. I'm 33 and, I, you know, uh, I was able to get to the booth. So it doesn't matter at what age you decide that you want to start something. The one thing that we have in this country that a lot of other countries don't have. And that's why I'm so proud to be a United States citizen. And I'm also proud to be where I come from, but I'm the most proud of my mother for those decisions and those sacrifices that she made. It wasn't for her. It was so that her two boys can have a better future. But the one thing that we have in this country that many other countries don't have, that's opportunities. Yeah, 
Amen. That's opportunities. And, and I want to show those kids that look like me, that speak my language. Uh, you know what? I've gone to several high schools now where, you know, I'm speaking to a hundred Hispanic kids. And now you got three of those saying, wait a minute, you're a digital anchor at WATE. You call the games in Spanish for UT. Well, how can I get involved with that? Boom. Now you're putting a little bug in their ear. Now they're thinking I have, I have options. And that was this whole purpose of it. It wasn't, it wasn't about me or my family. It was about let's, let's expand this passion that I have for the university of Tennessee because after getting to Alcoa, I did go back to school and I graduated from UT. It made me really proud when I met Mr. Bob Kessling. Unbelievable, by the way. I found out that Mr. Bob Kessling, 15 years ago, was the first person that really wanted to start something with Spanish broadcasting. So yeah. that, made me, that made me really uh, super awesome. proud to have known him. Mm -hmm. And we actually, we actually did, I don't know if you guys saw it or not, but we did a Vamos Vols video for week one versus Virginia. We were up there kneeling in the booth and I got to meet him and speak to him. And he said, Hola, vamos vols. <laughs> and, uh, you know, no he, got kidding. His, he got his three Spanish words in there, which was amazing. Uh, unbelievable person. Yeah, he is. But now we get to, now we get to experience. And one of the things that, that I've emphasized the most, I'm not trying to replace anybody. I'm not trying to rebrand re the university. I'm not trying to rename anything. Because the Power T and the University of Tennessee does not need any help renaming or rebranding anything. I mm. want to add something amazing that I'm passionate about to something already amazing that we already have. And I've been here since 2001. We have been through the worst of the seasons. We have been through the best of the seasons. It doesn't matter what season we have. I want to add something amazing to... <laughs> First of all, what Danny White has done in that university, that mm. leadership from Danny White to Dr. Monica LeBron to Bill Martin, who he just sent me an email because, again, you know, mm -hmm. I started that series with them, but almost lost with Carlos Lopez. Mm -hmm. um, my my series. Plowman. Oh, Donde Plowman, she came into the booth, gave me a hug, said, I'm proud of you. Uh, we took a picture. That's what it's about, man. When you're talking about the University of Tennessee's motto is diversity and inclusion. Yes. Tennessee lives that. Absolutely. The University of Tennessee lives that, and they showed me that by believing in this. Mm -hmm. How can you know? And one of the things that um, I was with Bob Yarborough before the game on mm -hmm. um, 98.7, and it's really, you know, when it, got, when it was released, me thinking, you know, having just the, the, the country boy Knoxville mind, oh, this ain't going to really, this is going to stay in Knoxville. No, this went nationwide, son. This went nationwide. I've been receiving messages from Mexico. I got a message from the country of Chile. I got a message from the country of Spain. I got a message wow. from Honduras, Colombia, because Fuad is from Colombia, Venezuela. What people mm. need to understand is that we have international people that have come to UT, have earned a degree, and they have gone back to their prospective countries to live their profession, and they still need to be a part of what we do. They are still part of the Vol family. And I don't care what I have to do. I will continue to work hard. If I got to do voiceovers until next season for whatever I got to do, I will do it. But those people that are out of the country, those people that are, you know, I've received messages from California, from Arizona, from Washington State. We have Vol fans all over oh, that yeah. are Spanish-speaking people. Mm -hmm. I want to add something amazing to something already amazing that we have at the University of Tennessee. Wow. Carlos, this is David Morrison, the other David. I uh, appreciate you coming on tonight. Uh, I'm really inspired, not only what your journey so far, but your faith in Jesus. I'm a brother in Christ with you, so that really is inspiring to hear that, but my question for you is uh, what is your just your favorite moment of that UTSA game going back to your very first broadcast and just uh, just that entire day? Okay. Uh, I, th I think I've already talked about this before in another interview. We do the game. Uh, the game's over. We had that first electric call, you know, the interception call, uh, the, the call when Keaton has the touchdown reception in the corner of the end zone. 
<laughs> SEC Network puts it on there. Vol Football puts it on their on their social media. Amazing. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Game's over. We're all saying our goodbyes. One one of the top three FWAD has done broadcasting uh, in the NFL and a lot of things. And, and he said, Carlos, this is the most fun that I've ever had doing wow. a broadcast. Um, and then throughout the whole game, what I didn't realize, <laughs> we're, we're calling the game. Dr. Monica LeBron, the deputy AD, she's in our booth and she's recording the whole thing. <laughs> so a lot That's of great. people probably don't know either that Dr. Monica is from Puerto Rico. Her family is Puerto Rican. So she's sending this to her family. She's sending it to her mother, to to her sisters, and they're so proud. And, and I told her, hey, you, I'm proud of you. You're Puerto Rican. You know, you made this happen. You know, thank you. Game's over. We're all saying our goodbyes. I walk out of kneeling. People, what I didn't realize is that I didn't know that people could have headphones inside the stadium because when I've been there, I've never had any headphones. So I'm just watching the mm -hmm. game. People have headphones and earbuds and stuff, and they're listening to broadcasts inside the game. So I oh, walk yeah? out of kneel. I walk out of kneeling. People are high fiving me. Vamos, vols, vamos, vols. <laughs> I call my wife. First person I call, I call my wife, and then uh, she's like, "Hey, we're waiting on you to get home." I'm so proud of you. We heard we heard the whole broadcast. Um, I got something for you waiting at the house. Man, I can't wait. Pull in, get to the house. My boy's waiting on me. And then my wife shows me a picture. And it's um, it's my boy. We got a little trampoline. It's my boy on the trampoline pointing at the TV and saying, pa, 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 pa. We're on the SEC network. Oh, man. And I'm like, you know, for... For the work that we've been putting in, man, mm. countless, countless of Twitter videos, countless of text messages, countless of DMs <laughs> that were, that nobody was replying back to two and a half minutes on the SEC network. And then you got my boy right here putting up the TV because his daddy is right there. Everything, everything that I do is. Everything that I do is for my kids. Mm. Every step that I take, you know, I, I've said it before, it's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. And every step that I take, I got little footsteps following me. I, I have a 10-year-old daughter as well um, who has now joined her broadcasting team at school. She's in mm. the fifth grade. And now she's one of those anchors to broadcast. You know how they do little news and oh, stuff yes. at school? Now she's doing that. That's awesome. And, and, my, and my kids are, you know, seeing their dad on the SEC network and my son is pointing at the TV and my wife's telling me, you know, but he's really confused because he's seeing you on TV. But, you know, he's listening to you on the phone and he doesn't really <laughs> understand what's going on. And then my wife showed me uh, showed me that 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 pose that she did. You know, he doesn't really understand right now how important this moment is for his dad, but he will one day. Oh, he gosh. will one day, just like, just like I understand now the sacrifices that my mother left to leave her two boys behind for two years, mm -hmm. um, not knowing what was going to happen. Um, there's not a day that goes by that I don't speak to my mother. And, mm -hmm. you know, we applied for a green card. We got it. We studied for our citizenship test. We became citizens. We came over here, we graduated not only once, not twice, but three times from a university. I got a bachelor's degree, two master's degrees, and now I have an amazing opportunity to go inside UT Athletics and interview the Spanish-speaking athletes so that they can grab this and send it back home so that their parents can feel as proud as my mom feels about me. I love it. It's awesome. Uh, yeah, David, go ahead. You got I just got, Carlos, you're the real deal. You you have the work ethic. You have the story. You have the passion. You've got God behind you. Uh, we we know big things are coming for you. Uh, so it's just cool to see it. I sure hope so. Uh, it is. It is. You just keep doing what you're doing, man. You're gonna blow up. Oh, well, he's already blowing up, which is 
I can tell you that he's going to keep <laughs> blowing up, especially with the passion energy you've, you've got. Well, let me just think two things. First of all, one of the most inspiring stories I've heard. So, uh, I know our fans are going to enjoy, I mean, if I could, pl- you know, upload this podcast right now, I would, because I can't wait for everyone to hear this story. It's uh powerful and I appreciate you sharing that with us. Um, I, I, wow is all I can say about that story, uh, Carlos. I mean, I'm out of I'm out of words. It was amazing. And the, and the second thing I wanted to say is, you've got a great mother, buddy. Man, what well, she is, um, she is the foundation. And a lot of people talk about you know, obviously, God is our foundation. But I was I was doing my daily yeah. devotional today, and you know, David on my right side, he's talking about you. Just said, hey, Carlos, you know, you got God behind your back. And then you're reading the book of Romans, chapter eight, verse 31. If God is for us, then who can be against us? That's right. And there, there's there's no really there's no coincidence like that when you're talking about that. And I just read that verse before hopping on here with you guys. I, I'm mm. a firm believer. You know, my life really changed. Uh, Christ really changed my life 10 years ago when my daughter was born. Um, mm. And then. Again, that leap of faith to leave Alcoa because I'm coaching high school to to get this opportunity to be up there in the booth with Fouad and with Brian and with Josh at, as my spotter. Brian, yeah. you know, being so kind, we didn't we didn't have any equipment. We didn't have yeah. any equipment. There's no there's no Spanish broadcast for the Vols. So Brian said, "Hey, I have my equipment that I take with me when I go broadcast the the volleyball games or the softball games. I'll do it. I'll set up everything and I'll be the producer. I mean, fantastic. It's a, and you know, you're talking it, it, the team, everybody in the vault network, everybody inside UT, there's no competition because you see, you see the comments. You see the comments, or you know, as far as broadcasting, everybody hates the CBS announcers and the SBN <laughs> announcers and all that type of stuff. There's no competition in that building. Right. There's no, there's no replacing anybody. There's none of that. We're yeah. adding something exciting. Uh, we're adding, we're adding a whole group of people that might not know about UT football, but now, and you're right, you know, it is getting out there. You know, Vol Report. On, on Instagram, they just posted something out there and then you have people, you know, from California, Arizona, Texas, you know, tuning in and say, hey, man, I got a message today from Santa Ana, California. You have a whole group of Mexicans over here. You got people from Southern Cal and all that stuff that grew up watching football all their life. But they've never heard it really in Spanish like this. And now we got people from California that are not really UT fans, but now they'll be UT fans. Wow. Because they just like one person announcing the game. And that's what I want. Wow. I want to bring all the people that I can here, English speakers, Spanish speakers, whatever you speak. I don't care where you're from. If you love UT the yep. way that we do, yep. you're part of us. I think about you doing that game with UTSA. And there's a huge Spanish population, obviously, in San Antonio. So for that I, broadcast alone, their people got to hear. And I, listen, that's amazing. Absolutely. So, you know, one of my hopes is, we have this bye week coming up. Mm-hmm. Now maybe they can figure out, hey, where can we put Carlos up here for the Texas A&M game? And now we got another Texas team coming in. Let's do something again. I, I can't imagine logistics is going to get in the way much longer. It's not going to be able to stop the the uh, the momentum that no. you have and, and the, the audience you have for your broadcast. Right, right, right. And, and again, it goes back to what you guys are saying. It's not just Spanish speakers. Because now, you know, I opened up my Instagram before I hopped in, and now the notifications things are like at are, are 100 apiece. They're like, you know, the followers. And the amount of Hispanic following that I'm receiving now, it's unreal. The <laughs> amount of Spanish-speaking followers. But, what you know, again, it goes back to understanding that you have a lot of Hispanic people that have been born here. Yeah. But they yeah. just live in different parts of the country. And, yeah. you know, football for – a Mexican family, American football for a Mexican family, we're a football family. We're a soccer family. But now you have, wait a minute, this dude is announcing football in Spanish, and now I can understand a little bit of what's going on in the game. Well, let me hop on here. And now you're bringing people in. Carlos, you've opened 
the door, buddy. Vamos I did get, Paul's I did get called, nationwide. Yeah. I did get called the pioneer of Spanish broadcasting here a, a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, man, you know. Again, I go back to my saying, God gets the credit, but yeah, it's amazing. That's what's happening right now, if you're listening. It's nationwide. amazing. Nationwide. Thanks to, to Carlos to, Lopez. To mm. the University of Tennessee. Vamos Vols nationwide. Come be a fan of the University of Tennessee. Absolutely. Ab- absolutely. Carlos. Absolutely. I'm going to go off script here. Because I just got to hear this in person if you're all right with this. Any chance that I could get a sample of that electric voice instead of <laughs> instead of Joe Milton this time? Maybe can I get a a Brad Frank at the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10, touchdown Tennessee, give him six in Spanish? Could I get something like that? Señoras y señores, le entrega la pelota por el medio a Brad Frank. Brad Frank, apartándose de la defensa. Está en la 40, en la 30, en la 20, en la 10. Y dale 6, dale 6, que aquí hay un touchdown. Gran naranja, vamos, ball. Good. I love the call, but Brad ain't beating Woo! nobody down 40 yards. <laughs> no, I no. No, even when, in my young days, I wouldn't beat anybody 40 yards. No, it ain't happening. But hey, that's my dream just now. Carlos there just let me live my dream by hearing that. Yes. That was there electric, Carlos. <laughs> God. I appreciate Good that. Man. That means the world. That means the world. Unbelievable. God, I've got goosebumps. Unbelievable. <laughs> Well, I, listen, hey, I tell you what, Carlos, you've been one heck of a guest, buddy. I, I, I've learned so much. Your your testimony is just incredible. Uh, do, do you want to stick around for just a few more minutes? We're gonna we're gonna go to our next segment where we're just gonna we're we're gonna recap the South Carolina game Saturday. You want to stick around for that? Yeah, go ahead. Let's do it. My God, what what a guest! It's unbelievable. <laughs> This guy's unbelievable. (laughs) All right, let's go to our next segment here. Recapping Tennessee, South Carolina. All right, guys. Now, as we all know, the Vols won pretty big, 41 to 20 in what I thought, and I'm crazy, I guess. I thought it was going to be a close game, a very close game, and I was wrong. Tennessee came out and played. They played the win, four quarters. Uh, I'll recap just real quick, and then I'll let the Davids go. Uh, The only thing I really have to say about that game, we talk about it every week, but uh, this week, the only thing I have to say, defense, defense, defense. They finally showed up. Finally showed up. 41-20. Fantastic game. Let's go to Carlos real quick. Before we go, oh, to man, David's you, you Carlos, know. what do you think of the game, buddy? First things first, I said it. You know, I posted a tweet again. 10, 15,000 impressions and whatnot. If our defense keeps playing the way that they're playing, this game's over. I'm talking first quarter, and yeah. then you go back. You know, Florida game. You got number five giving a little mm. shove. Florida scores, yep. blah blah blah, and, and then. You're getting a little booed here and there to your own player, which a, a lot of people are talking about. We shouldn't be doing that, which we shouldn't. Yeah. And then you have one of the calls that goes viral again. Kamal Hatton with a pick six, 26 yards. Oh, God. To the tabla de ajedrez, to the checkerboards. Mm. And it goes super electric inside Neyland Stadium. Yeah. Dude. And that's I, – I, I honestly think – that that was a little bit of the icing on that cake right there. One of those things that people are talking about, is this a revenge game? Buddy, let me tell you something. I'm not part of that team as far as playing. For me, that is very much so a revenge game. I want to get all the revenge. Then you have Hendon Hooker right there again presented in the first quarter. Crowd goes Mm. wild. He goes Mm. down last year. This game was for that. And then you got Brew going down. This game's for him. Mm-hmm. We were bound, we were bound to have some chicken noodle soup that night. <sighs> hey man, God, I l- listen to the energy this guy's got. <laughs> Are you listening to this? 
about to just jump up and start doing jumping jacks and sit-ups and i'm just about to start working out i'm about to work out right now oh man. it is it is what time 9 30 at night and i am jacked up right now man, what me too but this energy is this infectious is, you don't want to talk to my wife because she is uh Woo! She does, one of her comments is carlos there's mm-hmm. definitely never a boring moment with you and there's not i love it i love it <laughs> I think we'd get along, Carlos, because my wife says the same thing about me. Man, I am you know, just. I, the, I, I, I'm crazy, man. I get excited, and when I hear what? something, and I just get pumped, man. And you're bringing it. I'm all about this it, sir. I'm, I'm all about I'm, it, man. It's I love it. I love <laughs> it. Let's go to David Morrison. Morrison, recap that game real quick. All right. So two things that I that I took out of this game. Number one, the return of Cooper Mays. I really thought the offense was really clicking when him. When he was back in there, uh, felt very comfortable. The tempo was back to what Josh Heupel was normally wants to run. Um, you know, just like I said, the offense was really good. Thought Joe Milton for the most part did very well. He had a couple turnovers, so that is a little concerning. But uh, you know, probably kind of looking back, he was pressured quite a bit or had some coverage on at least that second one. Um, but you know, we'll see what going forward. At least going into the bye week can. Uh, uh, get some guys recovered and, uh, you know, like I said, you know, brew, that was just a, a devastating injury. Uh, and I know this team's going to be, uh, well inspired to play the rest of the season in his absence. And we'll, we'll find out who's going to take over down the road, who's going to step up, especially some of these young wide receivers now get an opportunity like a Caleb led a Chaz Nimrod, uh, and then maybe like score water or Mel Keaton can fill that void. And then the the defense, as Brad mentioned, containing Spencer Rattler, looking at his numbers, 30, 24 for 35, 169 yards, had an interception, QBR of 33, uh, averaged four yards a pass. So, I mean, you know, this is a five-star quarterback who played at Oklahoma, was a Heisman uh, Trophy contender a couple of years ago, and left Oklahoma, came to South Carolina, and, you know, he – Torched us last year, and I think this defense was ready for Spencer Rattler. And going into the game, it was it was you know which number seven at quarterback was really going to step up, and thankfully ours, uh, Joe Milton, stepped up. And uh, and and just looking at the and the rushing yards looked really good. Jalen Wright had a great game, sixteen carries, a buck twenty three, a touchdown. Jabari Small looked great. Uh, Dylan Sampson continuing to uh, just put up big numbers. Uh, you know, nine carries, 49 yards, but had a nice touchdown. So that's just the two things, just the return, return of Cooper Mays and then containing Spencer Rattler. Yeah, these. Yeah, I would agree. Getting Cooper Mays back was huge. You could see a big difference in the tempo. He was able to get everybody lined up and in position quickly. I just thought there was a smoothness yeah. to, the, to the offense this week that we've been not seeing and been missing. Uh, so having him back was huge. I continue to just be so impressed with this running game. Um, I think our offense is a run first team this season. You know, I think uh, that's our strength. Uh, Joe Milton's arm is going to keep people honest, but I just think uh, the bread and butter of this offense and the way we're going to score points and, and maintain drives this year is going to be by running the football. Uh, you got three great running yeah. backs. You got Wright, Small, and, and uh, Dylan Sampson, who all uh, bring something to the table. So I'm really encouraged by where we are offensively after this last week, um, just to see that consistency for four quarters. I didn't feel like there was a quarter this week where we disappeared on offense or where, where Joe went on uh, you know, a one of 11 streak of incomplete passes or anything like that. They just seem to be more in sync, and, and I'd like to think that Cooper Mays being back has solved a lot of that. Uh, defensively, you guys have mentioned it. Man, how about James Pierce? Uh, that guy is unbelievable. Oh, How about uh, uh, even even Joshua Josephs and Arian Carter? Just so many sure. of these young guys that are already coming in and giving valuable minutes, va- va- valuable snaps. Um, just really impressed about the youth on this football team. And uh, Rodney Gardner's got that defensive line playing lights out. Um, the secondary had probably their best game of the season. Uh, just so a lot to be encouraged by. And you, you, we, we said it, you got to win this game to keep – keep the momentum building and to kind of keep the, the hope alive for the goals that we had set coming into this year. And we did that mission accomplished. Uh, so now we get a bye week, yep. you get a week to get guys healthy. Uh, you get a week to watch Alabama and A&M have to play this week. Our next two opponents, it's rare you get a bye week and get to see both those teams play against each other. So I'm, I'm glad we're in that situation and uh, mm-hmm. just want to see us keep building on it and, and get ready to have another rowdy environment three 30 on CBS in two weeks against A&M. Yeah. All right. 
Awesome. Uh, yeah, once again, 41-20, Vols took care of business. What a great game it was. It was great to be there. And let's let's continue. Let's keep it going. Vamos. Vols. As Carlos said, pray, oh, prayers man, out to Brew McCoy. Balls. Prayers out to Brew McCoy. Gruesome injury. Yes. Uh, hate, hate that it happened. That awful. Football is a, dirt, is a, is a hard game uh, and stuff like that happens sometimes. But uh, prayers up to him and hopefully he can tough. fully recover and was have, has a lot more good football yep. ahead of him. Absolutely. All right, guys, before we get into our next segment, we're going to let our friend Carlos go as a, uh, gosh, I'm sure by now he probably regrets coming on our show. Uh, no way, man. You know, anytime, just kidding, just kidding. Uh, anytime that you get an opportunity, no, yeah. Anytime that you get an opportunity to, to really, you know, embrace what you're trying to do, uh, it's important. Uh, I think that again, everything that we've talked about is not about me. It's about those student athletes inside the university. It's about that staff inside the university that might come from a Hispanic background. And again, I'm doing this because that's what I am. You know, I'm Hispanic. Uh, Those student athletes and those staff, they don't just go to work or play or compete for one month out of the year. Uh, September 15th through October 15th, which is what we're in right now. We're still in Hispanic Heritage Month. You know, right now our tennis team, they're they're competing in, I think, in Waco, Texas, uh, our, our golf team. You know, they're competing year year in and year out, and that's mm-hmm. my mission. I want to embrace the, the Latino community that belongs inside UTK, and I'm blessed for this opportunity. And, you know, anytime that you have an opportunity to come over here and talk about something so great, like the University of Tennessee, yeah, you got to do it. <laughs> got to do it. Well, listen, Carlos, it was an honor to have you as our guest. Uh, I just love your story. We truly wish you nothing but the best from here. Um, it is my hope that the University of Tennessee, I, I, I mean, I know they do, recognizes all this buzz that you've created. And they, they, have, and to have, to they hear, have to have seen it, right? <laughs> well, I'll make sure they see it. I promise you that. <laughs> but listen, man, you've created such a buzz. And... And I would love and be honored to hear you calling games for us in the future here at the University of Tennessee. So, Well, Brad, David, and David, man, I will have you guys on my prayer list. You know, God bless you all, you and your families. May God cover mm-hmm. you all with his mental of grace, mercy, and healing. I hope that your heart is where it needs to be. Yeah. Um, you know, only you know that. You know, I, again, mm-hmm. I have to say just because it's the platform, if anybody that's listening – if you don't know what we believe in, and you need to find that, if you need to find that peace, if you need to find that love, it says it in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, come to me uh, and I'll give you rest for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Uh, Jesus loves you. You know, I appreciate this opportunity with you guys right here, Brad, David, and David. God bless you guys. Have a great night. Hey, thanks, God man. Bless hey, one you more too. thing. I need to see, next time we do check or kneeling, we need to do orange and white shirts with Vamos Falls on it. All right, how's that? Oh man, I, I'm ready for it. You know, a lot of let's people is asking for it. Um, let's start the let's start the buzz now. Let's start, let's let's start the buzz. Let's you. start the buzz for some Vamos Ball shirts. Yeah, thanks, Carlos. I would, I would <laughs> gladly be wearing. All right, that. guys, y'all have a blessed night. Hey, care. thanks for thanks so much. Have God a good bless. night. All right, See you. Vamos Balls. Vamos Balls. Vamos Balls. All right, wow, guys, what you just heard was uh, an in depth one hour show. With the man himself, the Spanish voice of the Vols, Carlos Lopez, David Dees, David Morrison. Are you both just in awe as I am right now? Uh, he, he was a great guest. Uh, you know, obviously his calls are uh, really special and people enjoy them. I, I loved hearing his story and, you know, the story about his incredible. mom and Pat Summit. And that's what drew, that's what drew her to Knoxville oh. and... That could have been my favorite moment of the story, uh, yeah. Dees. I'm not kidding you. Um, when he, as he's telling the story, I'm like, I'm still wanting to know. The, he's telling the story, right? He comes from all these places. And I'm like, how did the connection with Tennessee happen? Yeah. And then when he said his mother, yeah. you know, with Pat Summit, seeing her on TV, I mean, I got goosebumps. Yeah. Uh, pretty cool. Obviously, you know, a uh, a uh, 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 a crazy life experience. Just his mom takes a leap of faith to to bring him from Venezuela to to America, and then his leap of faith to 
to continue his education and, and take chances on, you know, having a career change. Yeah. Uh, just awesome. Awesome story. Awesome guy. Clearly loves the Lord. Clearly has, uh, yep. has his priorities in order. He's a family man. Uh, just wish him nothing but the best. He's very talented. I mean, at the end of the day, the reason he's on here is because he's very talented. He's very good at what he does. And I hope he gets more opportunities. Extremely to talented. And, and, and he should. And, and I, I believe he will. Um, just call it like it is. The guy's got talent, you know, and he's got passion. He's got drive and his energy. It's infectious. Um, I tell you, buddy. Man, Morrison. I mean, amazing, right? Yeah, an amazing story. Just, um, I couldn't imagine, you know, <laughs> let alone this is just me. I couldn't imagine like moving to the next county over and, you know, he moved from a, moved from a country, especially Venezuela over, over to the United States and was just all over the place and just taking that leap of faith. And, you know, and obviously his faith in Jesus is, is a big part of his life. And that's really personally me. I'm attached to him with that more than, more than the balls. Even though I, you know, I appreciate sure. what he does for the university of Tennessee. Um, but you know, yeah. it's just, uh, just an amazing story. So, so glad he came on to our show tonight and just told this story and just learn more about him. And, you know, I know, our listeners just listen to the, his interview right now. And I hope you're inspired by that. And uh, I hope the future of Spanish broadcasting will continue to grow, not only at the university of Tennessee, but throughout college football and maybe into college basketball and college baseball and open up, you know, collegiate sports to uh, many different countries, especially, you know, in today's world, we got technology and the internet and, all these different platforms and hopefully it can open up a whole new world of, of, you know, to ball fans just all over the world. And I know there, there's several around the world, but I think a lot of our international fans or like military people or people who migrated over, you know, like studying abroad. But now I think Carlos has just opened the door, you know, for his heritage and just and maybe many others and who knows maybe more languages maybe you'll have a Vols broadcast in Japanese or uh or uh, or France or uh you know just whatever it's just it's very very cool to see what can come of this especially Carlos is a big part yeah. well we were blessed tonight guys we we were blessed with a uh, a great story and i hope if you're listening to this podcast that you enjoyed what you heard. I learned a lot about a man uh, that I did not know about. I did not know about him. And now I know his whole story, his whole life story and how he became a Vol. And I tell you, buddy, this is what it's all about. That's why we created Vol Society in this podcast, Good Old Rocky Talk. It's, uh, it's stories that, that we want to give our fans that you, you know, something, a different perspective, something you might not know about. And tonight was just a treat. I don't know what else to say, but a uh, great guy he is. And we will certainly have him back on the show. But that's going to do it for us tonight. Uh, Dees, Morrison, do you guys have anything else you want to add before we go? Vamos Falls. That's perfect. That's a good way to end it. Vamos falls. Dale seis. I love it, man. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us tonight. Be sure to join David Morrison Tuesday night, 8 p.m. on our Facebook page, Vol Society. That's V-O-L Society for Vol Society Live. As usual, we had another incredible turnout last week during our live show with many fans asking many questions. So be sure to tune in Tuesday, 8 p.m. on our Facebook page. From all of us here at Good Old Rocky Talk, good night and vamos 